So again, the bank statement balance as of June 30th provided from the bank was 8,997. To that, we add outstanding deposits. What is an outstanding deposit and why are we adding it? In this case, it's in the amount of $2,500. So let's assume that LE Dance Company received a check from a customer on June 30th in the amount of $2,500. It came in the mail June 30th morning and Ellie's bookkeeper immediately recorded this check in Ellie's books and that caused Ellie's book balance to increase by $2,500 because of this check coming in. So this $2,500 then is already included in this $10,000 balance because remember this $10,000 balance is as of June 30th and Ellie's bookkeeper did record this transaction on the 30th morning and this balance is as of the 30th evening. Later that evening, Ellie's bookkeeper went to the bank and deposited the check in the bank. It was a Friday so the bank was open late, around 5 o'clock, well, the check was deposited. Now as you may know that all banks cut off their banking day sometime late in the afternoon or even maybe early evening. Let's assume in this case Ellie's bank cut off the banking day at 4 p.m. and Ellie's bookkeeper only deposited the check at 5 p.m. What does that mean? This means that once any transactions take place after the banking day is over, then those transactions are reflected in the next banking day. So even though the bank may cut off its banking day at 4 p.m., they may physically stay open till 7 or 8 p.m. that night being a Friday. But any transactions that take place after the banking day, in this case, hypothetically, after 4 p.m., would be reflected in the next banking day. And the next banking day typically is a Monday, not a Saturday, not a Sunday. So as far as the bank is concerned, Ellie Dance Company made this deposit on Monday, July 3rd, not in June. Therefore, that $2,500 is not reflected. Again, let me repeat, the $2,500 deposit made on June 30th evening is not reflected in this 8,997, but it is reflected in the $10,000 book balance. Therefore, as part of our reconciliation process, we need to add the $2,500 to the bank statement balance. Next, we see a bank error of $28 that's being added. So let's assume that as part of the reconciliation, we found that the bank had made an error where they had processed a check belonging to another company, Ellis Manufacturing. They processed that check against Ellie Dance Company's account. In other words, they had taken out $28 out of Ellie's bank account for a check that did not belong to Ellie, but belonged to Ellis Manufacturing Company. So the bank is gonna correct that error next month. But as of this month, to keep our record straight, we are going to add the $28 back to our bank statement balance to bring it in line with our book balance. So that's the rationale for this bank error here. Then let's look at the deductions. On the deduction side, we have outstanding checks for $1,200. What is an outstanding check? Well, let's assume that LE Dance Company wrote a check to Verizon Telephone Company on June 29th in the amount of $1,200 to pay their phone bill. So on June 29th itself, Ellie's bookkeeper reduced her book balance by the $1,200 when the check was issued. However, the check was mailed and Verizon did not receive the check till maybe July 5th, possibly, and then went and deposited the check on July 6th. So Verizon deposited Ellie's check on July 6th. And so the money only came out, this $1,200 only came out of Ellie Dance Company's bank account on July 6th. So as of June 30th, this 8,997 does not reflect this $1,200 check being processed because remember, this 8,997 is as of June 30th. The check only came against the bank account next week in July, around July 6th. However, the $10,000 book balance already reflects the $1,200 being taken out because as I told you earlier, Ellie's bookkeeper reduced her book balance on June 29th itself when the check was written. So therefore, to reconcile the two balances, we need to reduce the bank statement balance by $1,200 now. Next bank error, in this case, there were no bank errors that affected the bank balance uh, from a deduction standpoint, so we have a zero in there. Go through the math, 
and we end up with 10,325 as our adjusted balance, as our true cash balance. Does this number sound familiar? Certainly it does, because that's the same number we arrived at when we were making the adjustments here to the book balance. So going back to what I said earlier at the start of the discussion, we, one of the reasons why we do the reconciliation is to come up with our true cash balance. So in this example, our true cash balance was neither the book balance nor the bank balance, but it's an entirely different number. Okay, now that we've gone through the mechanics of the bank reconciliation, let me talk a little bit about errors and some adjustments that we need to make. First, let's do the errors. When you're reviewing the data and you see that there are, there's an error situation, I'm gonna give you two guidelines to help you. The first guideline is who made the error? So you have to review the data and determine who made the error. And you only have two choices, either the bank or the depositor. Next, you ask yourself, what was the effect of this error on the balance? Which balance are we talking about? Well, the balance that you're referring to in guideline number two is based on your answer in guideline number one. So for instance, in guideline number one, if you said that the bank made the error, then in guideline number two, you're looking at the effect of the error on the bank balance. And conversely, if the depositor made the error in guideline number one, then you're looking at the effect of the error on the depositor's balance, the book balance, in uh, the guideline number two. So keep those two things in mind uh, to help you with uh, handling error situations on the bank reconciliation. Next, we'll look at the adjustments. Once you've done the reconciliation, you may recall again that this $10,000 is the balance that's sitting there in your accounting records in your general ledger cash account. But you have gone through the reconciliation to arrive at a 10,325 true cash figure. But all you've done is done this reconciliation on a piece of paper, hypothetically. So just doing the reconciliation does not magically change your book balance. The only way you're gonna change your book balance is by going through and making a series of adjustments in your accounting records. For you accounting majors, you'll be making adjusting entries. And you have to make adjustments for every single addition and every single subtraction on this side, that is adjustments to the book balance. So once you do that, once you make those adjustments, then your accounting records will reflect a 10,325 cash balance, which will ultimately be the balance that will then be reflected in your balance sheet, which you'll be preparing next as of the end of the month. And that concludes our discussion on bank reconciliations. I hope you found this informative. And as I always like to say, this is Professor Lazarus signing off and we accountants work our assets off.